I forgot the note that Dave Filoni gave me that he never wants to see Boba Fett in black and he didn't want him <laughs> to look too much like Darth Vader. And so I presented the sketches and, and he was like, oh, this looks really good. <laughs> yeah, it's subtle. It's subtle. <laughs> but, um, but they ended up loving it. And I was like, phew. Um, and Michael Wandy was my sketch artist. And I, I, I'm like, Michael, we, we, you know, we got approved. And, and so... <laughs> don't um, tell him. <laughs> yeah, don't tell him. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Art of Costume Blogcast. I'm Spencer Williams. Thank you all so much for being here. We have a super special episode. Unfortunately, Elizabeth couldn't be here today, but that's actually beneficial to me because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd and I have 2,000 questions for today's special guest. Uh, she's one of my personal heroes. She did the costumes for The Mandalorian Season 2, Angel, one of my favorite shows, The Cabin in the Woods, Elizabeth's favorite show, Firefly. She had a ton of questions. I'm sure we'll just ask Shauna to come back at some point. And one of my favorite all-time shows, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And she just did the costumes for The Book of Boba Fett, one of my favorite shows. Shauna Terpsick is here. Welcome, Shauna. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited to finally be talking to you. I've been talking about this interview for months and months and months and months, ever since <laughs> Mandalorian Season 2. Thank you for being patient with my crazy schedule. I appreciate you. Oh, I'd rather you be where you're at. So <laughs> <laughs> you're creating all the cool content. <laughs> um, Shauna, I just have so much to ask you, but I just have to say I'm such a fan. I mean, I'm one of those people that grew up with the prequel Star Wars films, the Clone Wars is one of my favorite shows of all time. You've really had to bring to life a lot of my favorite characters, so I've just been dying to do this interview ever since that one episode with Ahsoka and the Mandalorian back in the day. So uh, just thank you, first of all, for everything you're doing. Of course, my pleasure. <laughs> So first, I want to start just with like the overall legacy. Um, we we actually just did an episode on A New Hope a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the costume design of John Malo, who ended yeah. up doing A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. So I just really want to talk to you about this whirlwind of a journey you are on. You know, Boba Fett's been around forever. Uh, Star Wars Holiday Special 1978 was our, his first appearance, yep. going all the way to the book of Boba Fett. So first, I just want to ask you, like, what is it like to be one of the costume designers of the Star Wars universe? And then what is it like to bring to life Boba Fett? I mean, that's crazy. Yes. Um, well, I, he he's actually always been one of my favorite characters, I, I must say. I mean, of course, we all had a crush on Han Solo and, and Luke Skywalker, but right, right, I, always, right. <laughs> I, always loved, um, I always loved Boba Fett. Um, in fact, you know, I had the the Lego Boba Fett, and, you know, all the, that kind of stuff. So when I was tasked with bringing him to screen, the direction I was given from Mandalorian season two from John Favreau was, um, you know, a, a man out of the desert, you know, and he he mentioned, you know, Lawrence of Arabia and in things like that. And so when I researched Lawrence of Arabia, you know, he was in all black. And so I just I took that to mean that John wanted him in black. <laughs> and, um, and so I started, I started, you know, sketching around and, you know, I had been very loyal when I created the, um, you know, the Boba Fett vest for Cobb Vance. I put it on, um, you know, gray fabric, like he, he would have looked in the original. So, but the sketches, it's so cool. Um, you know, my sketch artist um, at the time was, with you know, sketching him up. I'm like, oh, that, that the armor really pops on the black. I love this. And, I forgot the note that Dave Filoni gave me that he never wants to see Boba Fett in black and he didn't want him <laughs> to look too much like Darth Vader. And so I presented the sketches and, and he was like, oh, this looks really good. <laughs> yeah, it's subtle. It's subtle. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, he was like, oops, I forgot you told me not to do that. <laughs> but um, but they ended up loving it. And I was like, phew. Um, and Michael Wandy was my sketch artist. And I, I, I'm i like, Michael, we, we you know, we got approved. And and so, don't um, tell him. <laughs> yeah, don't tell him. So, bringing him to screen it, to me because I was changing his look so much, it took some of the pressure off because we were making a new statement, and I was under the protection of John and Dave and and Doug Chang that I knew they wouldn't let me mess mess this up. You know, I was in, I was in very good hands. Right, uh, such a big moment. Before we go forward, I also just want to say you just came back from Star Wars Celebration, and the f yes. I can't even say it's FOMO because I just missed it. it. Looked like you had the most <laughs> fun ever. I was so jealous. You, so many great costumes on display. Yeah, over sixty-five costumes. Um, 
and this was the gift straight from John Favreau to the fans. Yeah. Um, he, he did it for them. He, he, he got us all involved, but of course we all love the fans too. And so we, you know, we even, uh, we pulled background costumes and hero costumes. We wanted to give them and, you know, fan groups that follow me, like the cozy fish people. Um, I wanted to make sure I'm like, Oh, we got to get the sweater in there. You know, John, John has seen their blogs too. He's like, Oh, one of the breakout stars of Mandalorian season two sweaters. So <laughs> right. right. Such good. I mean, you could have your own museum one day, Shauna. I, I <laughs> fully support that. <laughs> um, another character who returned for the book of Boba Fett, I think personally my favorite character, um, Fennec Shan, played by Ming Na Wen, who is amazing. I'm obsessed with her. I just saw her in yeah. Hacks last night too, and she's oh, amazing in that. Wasn't she great? So, she was so good. I was oh dying God. last night. Yeah. Tell me about her costume, because it does seem like it's got a little bit of an update um, from when we saw her in The Mandalorian. But this armor is just the coolest armor ever. That orange. Oh, I know. Flawless. Yeah. So this is, out of you know, obviously the direction of uh, John Favreau and, and Dave Filoni given over to Doug Chang and Brian Maytes. And, the, you know, they birthed it for season one uh, with, with, with Joseph Paro, the costume designer. Right. And so when I got it, I did some updates to get a better fit. You know, now that they kind of knew how much movement they needed and their stunt activity. But then when I brought her, when she was brought into Book of Boba Fett, I thought that the helmet needs a little upgrade in design and function, you know, because, you know, she'll be doing flips. And, you know, Ming, Ming Q is her, her stunt woman. And I'm like, okay, we got to take care of these ladies. <laughs> and so, um, and so we, I, I, I worked with a, you know, a sculptor and we retweaked the helmet here and there and, and reshaped the slope and um, gave her a little bit better visual and I think a little, little tighter design. So just little upgrades, you know, so that we won't drive the fans too crazy. I updated Boba Fett's armor too. And boy, the fans got <laughs> crazy with me. They're like, I just finished my armor and you made some upgrades. <laughs> <I'm> like, Sorry. <laughs> uh, Star Wars fans are the best. I'll get into it a little later when I ask you the fan questions, but they have very specific, detailed questions. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> you know it's really fun. <laughs> okay. I think one of the questions I've been the most excited to ask you um, was the costumes you created for the Tuscans. I mean, we've always seen the Tuscans in a pretty much one note costume we've seen for their entire existence. So this was kind of mind blowing, actually. Can you just, I mean, I have a lot of questions about the Tuscans, about their anatomy and whatnot, but from a yeah. costume point of view, yeah. can you just kind of walk me through this. This was so awesome. So again, um, the, you know, the direction that I was getting from Lucasfilm was the same this, the Tuscan that we're all very familiar with, you know, in the all 10. But I had to support John's story of the man out of the desert. And it had been approved that he was in all black. And so in my mind's eye, the tribe that he would have been associated with needed to have black garments as well in order to pass that on to him. Mm. And so, oh, so cool. I started doing a lot of research on different tribes and how a community so isolated for population would come up with black costumes, you know. And so I was like, oh, charcoal and, you know, fires would, they can, you know, mix them up. And, you know, these, these fruit that they break out from the, under the sand, maybe one of them has black in it, like a sea, sea anemone would, you know, have black ink in it or something. So um, I started playing with that and then other colors, you know, the, the sort of reds from plants and the, the mustards. And so they started to come together. And then this was more of a nomadic Tuscan tribe in my head. So I, I looked to Mad Max again from the direction of John to see how um, Mel Gibson's character had little trinkets all over his outfit, all over his costume that he picked up along the journey. And so I tried to find little trinkets and pouches that they could put things in and carry things in that would sort of validate their nomadic existence, you know, on Tatooine. So they, it was an evolution and, we, and, you know, literally, you know, my, my specialty crew lined up all their, their, face masks on my desk and i just went to turn on some good music and i just started painting them and and <laughs> i wanted it to be very artistic and, and very emotional and you know then they started painting their whole costumes and all the layers and i'm like it was like creating individual pieces of art because john wanted you to care about them as individuals right so when they were in the battle you felt the same pain as boba fett and if they all looked alike it would be hard to you know, bring them out and feel for them as individual characters and their journeys. So that's what we came up with. That's one of the reasons why I just love costume design so much. I mean, you brought human type qualities to a, 
you know, cast of characters that we usually just hope that they get off the screen as soon as possible. You know, I mean, you made them, you made us feel for the Tuscans. I feel like a lot of that had to do with the costumes because you could tell that they kind of cared about what they were wearing and there was so much detail and story into each of their pieces. So, I mean, it's brilliant. Thank you. Another group of characters I thought was so fascinating um, was the mods. Uh, Like I said earlier, I grew up watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I also (laughs) love um, my favorite movies were the Spy Kids movies by Robert Rodriguez. So this to me felt like the perfect like combination of Shauna and Robert Rodriguez. (laughs) It was so cool. Can you just talk about these characters a little? Well, again, this is a brainchild of of John Favreau. And um, it it was funny because everybody was kind of button heads with him and his vision because they were afraid it would be too foreign to the Star Wars aesthetic. But he had very, you know, because there's a lot of untold stories of the layers of even Coruscant and the underground and where all these different groups come from. And, and he, he brought us to, you know, just our own society and how, you know, uh, at one point tattoos was really forbidden and piercing was really forbidden, you know, and so what would be very forbidden in, you know, in a land like Tatooine, well, they've always been very prejudiced against droids. So it's like, oh, people who modify their bodies with droid parts would just be the absolute punk rock, you know, antisocial statement. So he created the mods who modify the modify, you know, who modify their bodies, but it's also a play on the word mods from the 60s. And that fashion where they, they dress a little bit nicer, and especially in a desert community where everybody's in survival mode, these guys are looking you know, all posh and you know. That you think they're more vulnerable, but they're great fighters and you know a great gang. So I try to look for vintage fabrics and stay in the colors that we, where we associate with Star Wars, like the orange and the gray of a you know of a flight suit and things like that. But but then take shapes because I'd be very careful that I didn't go Star Trek or sci-fi. You know, I had to stay period because Star Wars is a period film, you know, in its own way. And so we started to develop this, but then with Sophie's character, Drash, he wanted her to be a little edgier than her cohorts, you know, not as dapper. And so we looked to, you know, Blondie and, you know, singers from that era. Yeah. And um, and so I, you know, I introduced, you know, the motorcycle jacket with zippers, you know, and I was like, okay, the zippers are just going to be decoration because there's no closures in space. Right. And then um, I did some, I was playing around with graffiti art and, 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 John says, well, why don't you have, you know, David Chow, you know, do the graffiti? I'm like, does he even have time to do that? Oh, heck so, yeah. <laughs> so I drove by his studio and, and you know, laid out what we had done and and then the, the leather jackets and he he painted it up. And and my, my artist, um, she, she had to do the double for the stunt double. But um, so it's very um, fluid and very organic the way they were sort of born into this world. Wow, that's so cool. If I'm not mistaken, that artist is one who did the graffiti for the first episode of Mando yes. 2. Okay, yes, great. along the walls of the yeah, the nightclub. Super talented. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I love this vest. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, very punk for yes. Star Wars, and it's. <laughs> I know it, it got mixed reviews, and it, it, but just like everything with Star Wars, I think it'll grow on people, and and people did make you know the the cross association of Power Rangers because of the different colors of the scooters. And um, it, it would be at home at Coruscant. Like people wouldn't question it. But the point was we wanted, like like you would pull from Italy or you would pull, you know, fashions from Italy or you pull fashion from Paris. He wanted this youth group to have pulled fashion and ideas from the more sophisticated worlds. So Right. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why we love Star Wars. I mean, there's so many layers and stories to this universe. I mean, it's almost yes. impossible to say, well, you can't do that. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> so we have to talk about Madame Garza Whip. I love this character so much. New character, obsessed with her. Her yes. fashion was another level. I mean, <laughs> she's so cool. She's even wearing white on a desert yes, planet. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's how bad she is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I believe I read that uh, the collaboration between you and Jennifer Beals was pretty strong in these costumes. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, so she she always made sure, even though she was she was working at, at the time too, she always made sure that she had time for our fittings. So we were able to sit and you know talk and work through who this character was going to be. And she had done a ton of research and knew that. 
a lot of Twi'leks had come from slavery. And so that she sort of made up her own backstory as, you know, how she broke out and how she, you know, achieved, you know, you know, ownership and, you know, her level of status. While she, while we were talking, I said, you know, while you're prepping for this and while you're journaling and, and, and trying to find her, if you see or feel any images or, or have any inspirations that you want to share with me, I'd love to work with that as I develop your character in the, you know, three-dimensional realm of costume, of costume. So she came to me with this notebook and you'll see on her, on her ears, that design that's straight from her dream. And they're all sort of integrated within, within her armor, not armor, but like her jewelry and into the embroidery. You don't have the gold one here in the image, but um, the gold dress, you'll see sort of a chiffon panel, almost like a modesty panel at her, at her, um, you know, center front of her, of her bust. And all those images were from her dreams. And we hand embroidered and beaded that little section as, as, as a, as a sort of like homage to her journey and, and, and things that meant a lot to Garza so that she'd seem more human. So you could really relate to her. You had to understand this woman's entire journey in a moment. And I felt the way to do that was to show, um, to show her to Jennifer Beale's uh, journey to find the character. Wow. I, that is so fascinating. I love that collaboration between you and her. And also, I feel a little sad now knowing that she might have blew up in the, the sanctuary. I kind of hope that maybe she was wearing something fireproof. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't see it happen, it doesn't mean it happened. Exactly. Um, yes, yeah, so one of my favorite characters. Speaking of the sanctuary, the amount of background work, I mean, it's hardly even background. You just really bring these worlds to life. The sanctuary... Mando goes to like a quick space station, I want to say, where you see yeah, like a yeah. lot of characters also. Just all fascinating, really just iconic costumes. What is your process like creating all these characters that don't even have speaking lines most of the time? Right. Well, so what I always have kept in mind, and I work with um, Gio and, and Frederick and Lawrence, and you know, I have like three or four costumers that, that help me dress all the, the pull, pull and put together all the background. So before we even go to an arena, I create boards to get into the mind of the area. And for me, Garza was, um, you know, multiple different people from coming from different planets and different places. And this was like everybody coming to Vegas. So I wanted to mix everyone from bounty hunters to the very wealthy. And, um, and then, and then the space station, I wanted uh, John's direction was Tokyo at night. So they had more of a, um, you know, a cohesive vibe, with, you know, rather than many different places. But what I always kept in mind was Boba Fett was just background. He was just one of many bounty hunters. And yet he's become so iconic and so important. So I treat every single background like a principal, it, you know, as much as I can, it, time and money. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so we design every single one. You know, we, the, um, Gio and Frederick and, and Lawrence and all them, they'll dress mannequins according to my boards and a color, according to my colorways. And then I'll edit and change, and then we'll do the fitting that's on the background artist. And sometimes we'll have to change a complete thing because the, the the actor playing the background artist is putting out a whole different vibe. And we're like, oh, this is interesting. Let's let's change this up. So it's a it's definitely a process. We have to do it quick and fast, and not a lot of money. But every single one is is sewn. You know, it's, it's custom built for them. We do have a, you know an immense warehouse full of you know bottom layers that we then build upon to create these unique looks. Wow. I'm, I'm blown away. And also, if I take anything away from this interview, it's, you know, at one point, Boba Fett was a background character. Yeah. So you have to keep that in mind. I mean, any of these characters could be a main character one day. That is so cool. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to write that down somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, okay, so we had a lot of returning characters that were big surprises to the book of Boba Fett. Um, we had... Luke Skywalker made a quick appearance. Obviously, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, which I'm going to try not to get too into. I hope that you and I could have a further <laughs> in-depth conversation in the future about her. But so when you have returning characters, especially from a show you, I have a feeling, probably just finished not too far behind. You got right. Uh, how does that happen? Do you like give the costumes little updates? Do you just pull them out of a closet? I kind of doubt that. No. Um, <laughs> especially with Luke Skywalker, you know, we we... We reached out to Skywalker Ranch, which which I've had a tour of, and and so I knew they have all all the original costumes there. And I asked them to take pic pictures uh, with color cards and measuring tapes 
to start with the original foundation. So I have the original foundations in my head. Then I design off of that to, like you said, slightly upgrade. Because Luke Skywalker has been through quite a journey since the last time we saw him on film. And so he wouldn't be in the exact same black outfit that we saw him in. But, you know, that's definitely the vibe. So, and the, and he also had to change, you know, when it, it, sort of the workout outfit and his more, you know, I guess official outfit. So we we played around. Also, I wasn't told right away, you know, in, in Mandalorian that he would be there. I mean, Rosario wasn't even Right. Told. It was supposed to be Plo Kloon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which Plo is Kloon. totally different people. <laughs> right, right. And, and they're like, but we want him in all black and we want this vibe. And, you know, it, but they they never told me the name. But, you know, obviously, as I started to build and, and I'm like, so does Plo Kloon need one glove or two? <laughs> they're like, OK, you know, <laughs> they're like, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and, you know, they gave me two different sizes and one, you know, one, one was slightly larger and one was, you know, tiny. And I'm like, this, this is Luke Skywalker. I know this is Luke Skywalker. So, <laughs> right. um, so we made the outfits and, 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 and then we did, um, then John and Dave wanted to go back a little bit more to the original when we saw him again. Oh, wow. So interesting. Oh, by the way, to Lucasfilm and Disney, if you are listening, let's not take Plo Kloon off the table, though. I right, still right now, very right. much want him on the table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of uh, give everything little updates in preparation for the Book of Boba Fett. That's yeah, really but each cool. piece, I mean, if you if you get really close on, on Luke Skywalker's, you know, all the draping here, you'll see each piece is, is slightly different. And we go into incredible detail. Um, a lot, a lot of the Jedi clothes are influenced by Japanese culture, you know, samurai culture. They, you know, they do stitching upon stitching them. You know, even the hard armor has tiny little braids that go along the side of it, and and beautiful little poppies sewn into it. So, it, it's important to me to find detail, even though the, the silhouette might just look all black. If you get in close, you'll see that we we paid a lot of attention to it. That's so awesome. And then for Ahsoka, I'm not going to dive into her too much because we're going to see her again in the future. But I just have to tell you now that we're finally speaking that I that episode with Ahsoka and Mandalorian season two was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I've been wanting that ever since I was like, you know, a kid. So it was awesome. I just yeah. have to say it was just brilliant. And I'm so excited to see what Rosario does with her next. I'm very excited. <laughs> um. Okay, wait, but speaking of characters that were brought back that I was so stoked, I wish I could replicate the scream I did when I saw Cad Bane on screen for the first <laughs> time. I mean, you saw all the fan reaction videos out yes. there. I wish I recorded myself. Um, Cad Bane is one of the coolest characters alive. Well, hopefully alive. <laughs> um <laughs> Can you just kind of talk about your process of bringing a character so loved by the Clone Wars and now the Bad Batch and bringing this to the Book of Boba Fett world? Yeah, well, I have my my son, um, Joseph, who is like the uber Star Wars fan as well. And oh, so you know, he's loving this. Oh, yes. And, you know, and <laughs> he won't let me like we're, we signed an NDA. We're not allowed to talk about anything. And any, anytime I'm tempted, I'm like, Joseph, you won't believe what I did. Today. He's like, nope, bye. And he'll hang up on the phone. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he won't. He's the responsible one. He won't one. even let me mess up and, and accidentally tell him. You know, it's like he's he's my best you know safety net to so I don't break my NDA. Oh, wow. Props to you, Joseph. I don't think. Yes, I, could. I know. He's amazing. <laughs> um, so. I, I know I'm designing also for Joseph, my son. It's like I I'm I hold each one of these characters incredibly, you know, close to my heart and and I have a fan for a child. So I know what it means to do this correctly. The pressure's on. And the pressure is absolutely <laughs> yes. on. And so we do a lot of um research and development. And again, I like to start with the foundation. So I go, you know, what what was the original animated character based on and Lee Van Cleef and you know all the old the westerns with you know all those guys and it's straight Lee, Lee Van Cleef's hat and and so we I developed from that and so all the the fabrics that I use are traditional western fabrics that you would have found in 1865 you know and so we start there I start with less than fabrics and then I you know Dave likes to work a lot with wind and so I'm like okay this needs to be a little bit lighter so we might catch a little little movement in the code and you know, this needs to be this length. And you, you start with the foundation and then you start to manipulate it and you always go back to Star Wars and you always go, I went back to the animation a million times to make sure what details am I going to keep and what details can I let go, but maintain, you know, his, him. And so it was a journey 
and it, it was a lot of fun to to develop him. It was so cool. I mean, just when you heard his boots walking, I like got <laughs> chills. And I didn't even know why I had chills yet. And I was yeah. like, they wouldn't bring Cad Bane back. That'd be crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, it blew my mind. It yeah. was just such a great performance. Oh, I know. Oh, with that, I mean, those are all of my questions. I kind of blew through them. But your fans sent a ton of questions. Like I said, they're all very specific. So I pulled a few that we could ask. Um, I believe two of them are from TikTok. So I'll do the TikTok ones first. Uh-huh. At the random penguin 999. <laughs> the, I love this question because it's just so simple. It's like, how did you make everything look so cool? And I was like, <laughs> great question. <laughs> well, again, I'm, again, I'm a fan and I'm, I'm also designing for the fans. But most importantly, you know, I have John Favreau, Dave Filoni and Doug Chang as my keepers. And so... You know, I can come to them with something real wild and, and, and especially Dave will say, no, that's 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 not feeling Star Wars. And and I'm like, no, you're right. You're right. And it's always it's always going back to period clothing and, and not sci fi, you know, staying remembering that. And I treat each character background or, or principle as a piece of art. And I do the research and I and I make sure that the fabrics are ringing true and the textures are ringing true and, and, and then the elements of star Wars. And I always go back. I, I'm constantly, you should see my, my, um, my little library constantly going back to the original trilogy and to, you know, a new hope and empire strikes back and return of the Jedi to make sure that my elements are correct. And that, that I'm using elements that you've seen before so that it rings true even subconsciously. So it's just loyalty to my foundation. And I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but I have a feeling you're like a fan who you read the books and watch movies. And my son does. <laughs> yeah. So I watched the movie, like last night. I got home and my son and I watched Solo. You know, and, you know that's after you know a 12 hour day of working on Star Wars. <laughs> <I watched laughs> How can you do more Star Wars? <laughs> uh, I, and it was great. I was like, I've seen it a million times, but I was just like, oh, look at that detail. I've never seen that before. You know, and right. <laughs> admiring the costumes and and being inspired. I even came and I told Gio this morning. I'm like, man, I watched Solo last night, and I just feel like I need to up our game. And she's like. <laughs> <laughs> Lana, we have no more time. Like, you know, stop but... watching movies, <laughs> please. She's like they had like a year prep, but I'm like, no, we did it. So funny. Yeah, yeah I mean, so it's... Just, I, just constantly being inspired. The shows are like my background shows when I'm like usually working on the blog or podcasts. Like I'm currently rewatching Rebels. Um, oh, I fun. know Rebels, and and see, I that's on my list. That's probably what I'll start watching it. You know, again soon oh, yeah. because you'll love it. Well, because I, you know, I've watched it, but then, you know, a million things have happened since I last watched it. And I feel like, like with Solo, that you re-see it. Because I was I was watching Solo again yesterday and I was like, why didn't people like this movie? It, it, this is just a great movie. Look at all the references they're made. Like, I was like, it is. Know, it's an awesome movie. Getting all worked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, speaking. Speaking of fabrics, uh, Pharaoh Bokaton on TikTok just wanted to know how did you choose the fabrics and what textures do you try to reach for and why? So, a lot because we're on the small screen, textures are very important because I, I want um, even just a, a straight costume, a straight silhouette to catch the light from different directions and to create movement. And so, it's important to me to find fabrics with textures. And depending on what the character is, if it's, you know, if it's a Tuscan, then it's a more hand-woven uh, t- texture. And if it's somebody like Garza, it's something that might catch light with a sparkle or with the richness there. And so depending on the character, depending on what the action is, depending on what they have to do, and if they're going to be indoors or outdoors mostly, I try to find fabrics that will help tell the story of the character that you're standing before you. Because you only have a minute to get to know them often. Right. And sometimes their time is shorter than others, like yeah. Garza, for example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then final question. This one's actually pretty funny because my dad sent it in. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> um, I'll say, too, my, my dad and I really kind of bonded over watching the recent Star Wars shows. He started with Mandalorian Season 2 and Boba Fett. So now he texts me after every episode and asks. He's never seen, you know... Clone Wars or Rebels. So now he texts oh, okay. me every time, like, who's the blue guy? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> um, he will ask, is there a costume or part to a costume that you feel particularly proud of? And is there a costume that maybe you feel like you, if you had more time, you would do differently? Um, of course, every time I watch, you know, the shows over again, 
I was like, oh, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more, you know, time to do that, more time to do that. But because I know Star Wars is so iconic and that the choices I make will be replicated um, by the fandom. And, and you know, Lucasfilm keeps such great, um, you know, track of everything and, and, you know, historically. So I really try to make my decisions and stand by them. So I, I don't tend to backtrack or second guess it. Once it's out, it's out. But, you, do, you know, you always want to keep learning and growing. Um, so I feel proud of it all because I have an incredible team, you know, for my assistant costume designer, Alyssa and, and, and Gio, my customers and Frederick and, and then all my team who are building everything, all my artists that are building everything. We really come together as a community of artists. And, you know, and usually that's pretty crazy for even just two artists to work together, let, let alone 15, you know, artists who come together every day and, and join together to create these things. You know, my tailors, my cutters, everybody. I'm proud of every item that gets in front of the camera, you know, because it's something that we all put our heart and love into. And, you know, we do work, you know, 12 to 15 hours and, you know, there is no air conditioning in the warehouse that we work in. And, you know, we're in California, it's 110, yeah. you know, so we, 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 we make a lot of sacrifices of, of time and energy and, and, you know, even, even Geo goes home and watches the star Wars movies and all and a lot of my tailors do and, and my specialty guys do. So, I'm proud of everything that makes it to screen because I know that so many of us have poured so much heart and love into each piece. I, yeah, I mean, that that's a great way to finish. I mean, <laughs> it's all just so brilliant. I'm so in love with the show and I'm just so excited to see what you do next. I know that there's so many things and surprises coming in the future. And I just, Sean, I'm so glad I finally got to speak with you. <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for listening and thank you Shauna for joining us thank you The Art of Costume Blogcast is hosted and produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams our audio engineering and editing is done by Dan White follow us on Instagram at The Art of Costume Pod or visit theartofcostumeblogcast.com for all blogcast updates if you want to support the show, go to theartofcostume.com slash podstore, or you can head over to patreon.com slash theartofcostume for some bonus content. For more costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, head over to theartofcostume.com, a blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design. 